And now here's Anne Galloway with our Stream of Conscience book review. This week we're looking at Wendell Potter's Deadly Spin, an insurance company insider speaks out on how corporate PR is killing health care and deceiving Americans. Formerly a communications executive for one of the nation's largest health insurers, Wendell Potter now is a senior analyst at the Center for Public Integrity and a senior fellow on health care at the Center for Media and Democracy. Deadly Spin tells of Potter's experiences at the highest levels of the health care industry, where his job was to promote disinformation. However, he became so disturbed about the lies he was being highly paid to promote that he left his job and told the story. In 2009, Potter disclosed to a Senate committee how insurance companies have forced millions of Americans into the ranks of the uninsured. He also described how the insurance industry developed a communication strategy based on deception to defeat or weaken health care reform. Potter's book begins with the quotation from Alex Carey, an Australian writer and social psychologist who pioneered the study of corporate propaganda. The 20th century has been characterized by three developments of great political importance, the growth of democracy, the growth of corporate power, and the growth of corporate propaganda as a means of protecting corporate power against democracy. This book is as much about public relations as it is about health care. Deceptive practices corrupt public debate and policy in many industries, but Potter says that healthcare offers a particularly egregious example. The term medical loss ratio surfaced in our recent healthcare debate. This term applies to money paid out in medical claims, which insurance companies treat as a loss. So to keep stock prices up and satisfy Wall Street, insurance companies find creative ways to deny reimbursement or to drop coverage entirely if a patient files too many claims. In a section of the book, which he calls Bernie Madoff should have been an insurer, Potter explains that insurance commissioners lack the authority to intervene, and most state legislatures have taken a passive approach because health insurers are large employers. And in every state, they also happen to be among the biggest spenders on lobbying and campaign contributions. Potter says, if you are among those who believe that the United States has the best health care system in the world, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, it's because my fellow spinmeisters and I succeeded brilliantly at what we were paid very well to do with your premium dollars. In fact, the U.S. ranks 47th in life expectancy at birth behind Bosnia and 54th behind Bangladesh in fairness. And if you were persuaded that the health care reform bill President Barack Obama signed into law in March 2010 was a government takeover of the health care system, my former colleagues and I earned every pen penny of our handsome salaries, not to mention our bonuses. So given his handsome compensation, the question is why Potter chose to walk away from a cushy job and essentially become a whistleblower. First of all, he learned about the death of a young girl who was denied a transplant that could have saved her life. He also visited a rural site close to where he grew up, seeing people with no coverage lined up to receive free treatment in horse stalls. Potter also saw firsthand how the industry colluded to minimize the impact of Michael Moore's film Sicko. The same public relation firms that served the tobacco and fossil fuel industries with their disinformation campaigns applied a full court press against Michael Moore. Potter says even promises made directly to President Obama during the recent health care negotiations were lies. While the resulting legislation will expand coverage and control some costs, it doesn't include a government-run public option to compete with private insurers who will benefit handsomely from mandated enrollment. I'd give it a C. Wendell Potter actually apologized publicly to Michael Moore on Countdown. And I wonder if this apology may have contributed to Keith Olbermann's departure from MSNBC. There are risks for speaking the truth to power. This has been a Stream of Conscience book review. I'm Ann Galloway. Thanks for watching.